I wanted to talk about why Jack Harlow is like one of the worst rappers I've ever heard in my life. And I don't say that because like it's an over exaggeration. I know how things can get on websites like Twitter and people think that everyone who says this is bad or this is egregious or this is terrible is seeking attention. So Jack Harlow dropped this album and it's legitimately one of the worst things I've heard in years. I'm, I'm being genuine with how I feel about this record. It's one of the worst things I've heard in a couple years. But before I hop into what I think makes Jack Harlow such a terrible rapper. Well, I wanna let people know that I do understand Jack Harlow's appeal. And I've gone over this in a few videos in the past by uh, acknowledging his persona, uh, noting how well he interacts with other people, his peers, his audience on social media. He has a great uh, star presence, meaning that uh, if at any point in the future he likely had any issues with his celebrity, he would be able to get out of it pretty easily because people already like him. He has a strong connection to his women demographic. Outside of some of the women who love his music calling him attractive, I don't really know what he's done to make women feel so close to him, but that's them, not me. They call him a ladies man, that's what he is. Jack Carlo seems like a good time, seems like a chill dude. Uh, no argument there. Now, what makes him trash? Everything that I just mentioned never shows up in his music. The charisma, that ability to capture a room, none of it shows up musically. The redeeming quality of a show like Family Matters was that Urkel had two sides. He had the nerdy, geeky, shy, more considerate version of himself, the one that didn't seem as intimidating and seemed much more approachable and more realistic in the show in his day to day, but then when he needed to step it up, when he needed that confidence boost, when he needed that ego, he channeled Stefan. The reason Stefan worked in a show like Family Matters is because you rarely see him. When the world needed him most, he was there. Stefan alone doesn't work because despite how charming the character is, he works because he's accompanied by something that offsets him not long after he's introduced. Come home, the kids miss you, in my opinion, is literally just family matters if Steve Urkel never existed and we only had Stefan. Now, some of you might be asking yourselves, what the fuck does this have to do with anything you have to say? The Drake comparisons. For some odd reason, people immediately want to throw the Drake clone or the Drake lookalike on Jack Harlow simply because he makes what I would consider fuckboy music. Now there's nothing wrong with being a fuckboy, we've all got our phases. Though it seems based off of his history and rap, Jack Harlow's been in this phase since about 2018, and the reason I likened him to Stefan in general is because he portrays himself as so one-dimensional of a person. The Drake comparison to me is extremely disrespectful because Drake is someone who did accompany that Stefan with the Urkel. Drake accompany that Stefan with the Urkel so well that he was clowned for it. Oh, he's too soft, he's too emotional. I could beat Drake's ass, that's what people used to say. But me, listening to Drake so young, understood the reason why women were infatuated with the things that he used to say because he came across as emotionally intelligent, somewhat considerate, and most of all, vulnerable. You look at Urkel and you see an innocent individual. On top of not having that everyday Urkel norm musically, this guy is nowhere near as nuanced and as layered as Drake was. None of the lines that Drake can normally spit in his earlier work or even at this very moment in his career to garner that comparison. That comparison is just downright disrespectful. It's apparent when we hear a track like Churchill Downs, where even after adding a couple of additional bars to his verse, the gap between him and Drake is so big that you need the Hubble Space Telescope to cover the distance. You know the difference between these artists is that some offer nuance and some don't. Jack is the dude who shows up to the college dorm party with a Bud Light and raw dogs every chick in the back room despite having six condoms in his pocket. And I don't like reducing people to their sexuality, but that is Jack personified. That is that is what he's decided to do with his persona. I show up, I see whole, I fuck it. The album. There are hints of Jack trying to initiate a relationship with one of the girls that he's seeing on Lil's Secret, for instance. Lil's Secret is a track where Jack Jack Harlow is gaslighting some girl he's talking to and believing that he doesn't have any control over keeping her his little secret. And again, the concept of this isn't foreign to me, but I've never heard someone unironically make an entire track about it, victimizing himself while crooning over these female R&B vocals, while using this tired, keep it light flow. As a former fuck nigga myself, I identify with the sentiments that Jack is trying to exude in this song. But this nigga's pen is atrocious. There's a part of me that loves this track so much because he's being so purposefully vague, and I know with his 
roster, he can apply it to a bunch of different women that he's talking to at the same time so that all of them can feel satisfied. Genius, Jack. I, I understand what you're doing, but you have to have the type of pen that allows you to get away with this shit and he just doesn't. When Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B make wet ass pussy, they're, they're ruining a generation of young women, they're poisoning their minds, they're destroying the youth, but when Jack Harlow makes an entire album about fucking about womanizing, about just being a dickhead with zero substance or layers to him whatsoever. Oh, he the next Drake. And don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with this album because he got a bunch of bitches. I just can't overlook the hypocrisy. This nigga has a bar on this album talking about his semen. Some of these bars are bad, but they're worse when you put them in the context that he uses them in. Unprovoked, I like to dictate things Kim Jong. What the fuck are you talking? Am I handsome enough? Now them same girls got coke in their nostrils. Something done made the youth hostile. Maybe it's the fuel from them fossils. You just hate him because he's white. Duh! Jokes aside, I've seen this criticism thrown around way too much. And I'd argue the reason y'all love him is because he's white. If arguably the biggest rapper of all time admits to you that a good deal of his popularity and success came from the fact that he is white, you don't then get to also victimize those same people later on when they get popular for basically no reason. When the world shat on Lil Yachty, Future, Young Thug, Playboy Cardi, no one said y'all are hating on these artists because they're black. And some people think, well, why would anyone hate on these artists because they're black? Hip hop is a black genre. No, it is not. Hip hop stopped being a black genre decades ago. You go to any major festival, you go to any show, you go to most of these tours, you see nothing but white faces. Do I have a problem with that? No. Get your money, go have your entertainment. But y'all have to learn how to properly label things. Hip hop is not a black genre. Hip hop is a genre invented by black people, pioneered by black people, shifted by black people. It is very much so a genre that entertains for the most part white people. So when you say that you hate Jack Harlow because he's white, you're talking to other white people when you say that. Y'all make up the ticket sales, y'all make up the tour sales, y'all make up the faces at the shows, at the festivals, the merch sales, the album sales, and yo, you guys make up a lot of that. So when 2013, 2014, 2015, Big Sean comes out releasing records that I'd say at this very moment are bad in my opinion, but are still far superior to Jack Harlow in anything he's ever put out, yet manages to place in the top 20 most monthly listener spot on Spotify, despite its mediocrity, you don't then get to tell me he's a victim because of his whiteness. His whiteness is crippling his career. His whiteness is supporting his career. What are you talking about? When Roddy Rich dropped mid last year and people called that album trash, not a single soul said, oh, it's cause he's black. Y'all don't like this album cause he's black. Y'all don't wanna see him succeed cause he's black. The only thing for white people in hip hop is more money, not more hate. He was better before. Uh, no the fuck he wasn't. Jack has been making slightly shorter, less industry approved albums like this since he started releasing albums. I know, I checked, I need therapy after that. It's rare when the song that pops is your best song, but in Jack Harlow's case, it's actually true. What's poppin' is literally the best thing I've ever heard from him, and even that song is mid. Every album since 18 has just been a reskin. With the exception of a few tracks off of That's What They All Say, Everything that this album is, is exactly what Jack has been making. So I don't understand why people say he used to be better or he needs to go back to his old style. His old style is the new style. You can say y'all don't understand what happens when an artist has to go pop. He's never had to go pop. He's been pop. Outside of being painfully generic and uninventive, it just feels like Jack Harlow is feeding into this silhouette, a void, a black hole of a person. Don't get it twisted either. I'm into empty, vapid rap just as much as the next person. But this isn't catchy, this isn't rhythmic, this isn't ear grabbing, there's no great hooks, the singing is god awful. People were unironically telling me that this album, despite being awful, was still more preferred than The Big Day, which I will agree is ass, but this is just as ass to me, if not worse. His extremely generic use of classic songs like Special or the Fergie track off First Class, even Destiny's Child on Talk of the Town, his 
interpolation, his takes and his uses of these musical moments, these gems are always used in the most basic of ways. And when Pharrell does actually show up on this record, it's crazy because it legit feels like he sold the white boy an eighth for $100. I swear to God, he scammed the fuck out of Jack Harlow with this song. This production is some of the worst shit I've heard from Pharrell in a very long time. I don't know if it's the kick or the drum on this track that's reminding me so strongly of something out of a early to mid 90s NBA game for the Sega Genesis. A transition is cringe and, and that's another part of this album that's terrible. The transitions. I, Young Harleazy wastes a Snoop Dogg narration into an even more boring version of the same song. I do anything to make you smile. Uh, Could have been a perfect chance for Jack Harlow to have a really good tongue-in-cheek comedy love song. But instead, yeah. I'ma fuck the earrings off of you. To end this off, because I know this video has probably been way longer than I intended for it to be. Having a a theme or some sort of cohesiveness to an album doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be conceptual, doesn't mean that it has to be extremely lyrically based, doesn't mean that you have to be the greatest rapper of all time. It just means that when you talk about or discuss something in a record, what will make more people confident in your artistic abilities is how you talk about these things. For instance, we don't love Future because he talks about sex and fucking and being toxic. Most people love Future because of the way he goes about doing these things. You will hear him say some shit and be like, what the fuck is wrong with this man? and keep bobbing your head. I find myself asking the same question about Jack Harlow's music. What the fuck is wrong with this man? But not only can I not continue to bob my head because these beats sound so cheap and generic, I can't keep bobbing my head because this album feels like it's told from the perspective of a 25 year old high school student. In other words, this is Billy Madison the album and you like it, you like it, that's fine. Just respect my ability and my wish to not wanna ever hear this shit ever again. And know that I will never come at you for loving or liking any of the songs off of this record. I will just stay as far away from you as humanly possible